Well, we have the opportunity here to talk to our chief technical officer about this new announcement of the new generation of vessels, something that is not happening that often. And you have been able to be twice in a similar position, right? Because this announcement, this that, that we have done today, is meant to, to, to make history in the shipping industry, isn't it? Yeah, thanks a lot and thanks for having me today. I'm sure you are referring to my previous engagement in the launch of the Triple E's back in 2013. So absolutely, I mean, both me and everybody else involved in, in, the, in the launch of this new ex uh, design are super excited. It's, it's really great to have been able to once again introduce something that is uh, new to the industry. So, uh, so that, that is uh, super exciting. These vessels are meant to, to make history, right? Because it will be the, the, the first green container vessels ever. So that's important. But if we look into the new design, we can be proud of many other things, right? What are the main features of this new generation of vessels? Yeah, the, so uh, absolutely. Besides the obvious fact that it can operate on green methanol, which is an accomplishment in itself, as you can see from the hull design, uh, we have managed to move the accommodation block at the navigational bridge and the living quarters for the seafarers all the way to the front and the funnel arrangement uh, all the way to the back and to the, to the side, opening up, uh, uh, being able to load cargo in a very uh, you know, efficient part of the, the, of the hull. So that, that, uh, that is the key, uh, the key thing about the new design. Pella, can our seafarers be happy with the new design? Don't you think that they will be worried about uh, how to handle bad weather conditions? No, I mean, that question uh, was a fundamental one that we dealt with in, in, in the development of the new design. So, so let me just highlight, there were basically five uh, key things that, were, uh, that we needed to overcome. Uh, first and foremost, the crew comfort aspect uh, was uh, really important. Uh, as, as you uh, likely know, there are other vessel designs where the accommodation is placed uh, all the way forward. Uh, you have it on cruise vessels, you have it on car carriers, and also even on uh, much smaller container vessels. So the, the new thing was here really applying it on a, on a large sized uh, container vessel. So to make sure that we really uh, managed the crew comfort part uh, sufficiently, we, we did a lot of analysis into this. We have engaged with some of our senior captains and, and what, we, what we are seeing is a scenario where there, there will be more movement compared to a, a similar vessel where you, where you would have placed the accommodation further aft, but it is still f very much within uh, uh, the, the limits of what is considered acceptable. And it's also even less than what you would experience if you were on a, on a much smaller uh, container feeder, as an example. Mm -hmm. So we, we are confident uh, that, uh, that that part is taken well care of. The second element that really needs to be uh, uh, dealt with was the hull strength, where we had to ensure that when you have a, a big container vessel, the, the hull in itself is basically like a big open shoe box, so it gets wobbly if it's not uh, properly stiffened. Mm -hmm. In the old design, that stiffening came a lot from the structures that you had there as well. So that a lot of validation needed to take place in order to make sure that you could get enough strength into the, to the hull design to overcome uh, that part. Then we had to find uh, some new solutions for the arrangement around lifeboats, for navigational light uh, installations, and lastly uh, also that by having some uh, cameras installed and so on, we, we will support the navigators in uh, getting the right sense for the heading of the ship so that, you know, um, when they are maneuvering and so on and, 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 and being able to, to monitor the turn rate and so on, that that they can have that feeling for, for, the, for the movements, despite being uh, located all the way to the front. How much efficient are these vessels? They're very efficient. I mean, if we compare this to a vessel of the same size uh, in, the, in the average uh, container fleet today, this is 20% more efficient than uh, comparable uh, vessels. And, and if we then take it up against and measure it up against, uh, you know, our recent uh, first generation, you could say 15K vessels, the Hong Kong class, here we are looking at about a 10% uh, improvement uh, uh, compared to those. So, so they are really uh, very, very efficient. Will they be able to, to run all times 100% on carbon neutral fuels? Yes, uh, the vessels are what we call dual fueled, which means that they will be fully capable of running uh, on methanol, green methanol, 
if we, for whatever reason, are not able to secure enough of that, uh, they can also operate on uh, conventional low sulfur fuel oil. So in that sense, we, we have introduced a little bit of an insurance in case we are not able to source uh, exactly all the methanol that we need from, from the day they are launched. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is uh, one of the challenges that we are overcoming. Pelle, if I understand it right, everything that is implemented in this new series, right, it's known technology, so why has it take that long to actually implement it in large vessels? Yeah, no, as, as mentioned, uh, uh, we, have, we have had these different challenges to, uh, we had to overcome. It's a, it's a process that has been running for nearly five years, where we have engaged a lot with our key classification society, American Bureau of Shipping, as well as the building yard, uh, Hyundai Heavy Industries mm -hmm. in this case. and and. Together, we have uh, we have tried to cover all aspects to make sure that when you when you you launch a new design, you want to make sure that that you do it right. It, the vessel needs to be uh, operating for 25 years, uh, and uh, that's why uh, you know we have really done an effort to make sure that we had all uh, angles covered uh, before uh, launching this. You have been hardly working for five years in this new design. Uh, is it still a lot to be done when we talk about energy efficiency or the job is already done? It will never be done. I mean, we will continuously strive for finding ways to overcome existing barriers and, and to really take efficiency upwards all the time. Just as, an, as, a, as a comparison, you know, these vessels that we are launching here being at around 16,000 TEU, they will be as efficient per transported container as the second generation triple E's that we have in our fleet capable of moving about 20,000 containers, right? So we need to find always solutions for no matter which size segment that we are working in, how to, how to really take the efficiency to whole new levels. And obviously that would also be the case if we were to build uh, bigger ships, where, which we have no plans of right now. But no matter the size segment, we need to find ways to really take efficiency to new levels continuously. Thank you for being with us today, Pelle, and congratulations to you and the whole team. Thank you, and thank you for having me. It was really uh, great to come here and speak to, to you about this new design.